Hi, everyone. Welcome to Double Defense. Uh, we are an all-female, especially today, uh, <laughs> New York Rangers hockey podcast. And we have with us a very special guest. Um, and not to complicate anything, but her name is Liz also. Um, not Liz also, but Liz. <laughs> uh, I'm one of your hosts, Liz. We have with us Christine, and then we also have Liz. Hi. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, ladies, I think we have a lot to talk about this week. Um, the Rangers did unfortunately end their uh, their win streak. Uh, it went to 10 games. Uh, so we got to 10. We did not get to 11. We did not break any franchise records, uh, but we did lose to um, the Columbus Blue Jackets, which was a little disappointing. Uh, but we have gotten to see so much in the last week, uh, especially with Matt Rempe. And we'd just love to get your guys' thoughts on, on what the Rangers have been up to this week. So and what much. did Matt Rempe do? I feel like a week or like a, like six months. You know, with the amount of things that happen between. I just want to say, I did not have two New York Rangers giants um, beating people up on my New York Rangers bingo yeah. card for the no, second. I, 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 no, so I didn't. You're part of the prediction. You forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a what a crazy week. I mean, we were just kind of you know just this time last week just talking about that outdoor game, which Liz, uh, mm -hmm. our guest list, you were at actually. So kind of want to hear a little bit about that too. So. Um, that was my first time going to an outdoor game. And when we found out that it was going to be at the Meadowlands, I still call it the Meadowlands. It's me never too. that place to be. I, <laughs> and, um, I was like, is it the same place? Yeah. It is, actually. My yeah. husband I said, I've been out of New York for a long time. <laughs> it was kind of a, you know, it's not if we're going, it's where are we sitting. Right. And, and we ended up sitting kind of like where the goalpost would be in a football game. Because we want to be able to see everything without being too high up. Um, so, you know, we got there really early for when gates opened at 10 o'clock because <laughs> I wanted to wisely to too. I heard, I heard there was a lot of traffic getting in, into from like, even from the parking lot into the, the stadium yeah, too, we had so. to wait maybe about 20 minutes because everyone had the same thought that we did. Yeah. Um, and we met up with a few of our friends randomly throughout the tailgatings. So we were kind of migrating around, went to the pregame thing, which was pretty cool. Um, my husband grew up watching hockey. Like, you know, he was a passive fan until we were in college. And we got to meet Mike Richter during the pregame thing, which was pretty cool. He was geeking out. And to me, you know, being a newer fan, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, you know, for him, he was like, okay. this was my childhood as a hockey fan, you know. Totally. Um, to me, you know, kind of pre-Hank, I don't really have much going for the, you know, New York Rangers goalies, but that's Okay. But he was pretty excited to meet him. Very friendly, cordial, willing to sign autographs for everybody. Took his time, which was nice. Um, so that was a lot of fun stuff. We got in probably around like 3 o'clock. They were starting the game late because of the sun, which was oh, yeah, yeah, right? expected, right. I guess. We talked about that, too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, we should be before the game. But they, our other guests were, were in the sunlight. Yeah. <laughs> So that was cool that, you know, we had a little bit more time to kind of hang out with people before going in because we weren't sitting with any of our friends. We were all sitting all over the place. Okay. So my big question for you on the seats, having never been to an outdoor game, to me, it looks like all of the seats are so far away from where the ice is. Could you see the ice from where you were sitting? Were you watching it more on a screen? Seems like basically just that see that the clock from where we were sitting. And um, where, so, so how close, cool. how close were you to like the front? like the front row we were about 35 rows back in our section um and we were sitting at an angled area so you kind of had more of a like straight down view as opposed to if you were sitting right in the front row i feel like you would have been looking into the boards so it was the opposite of when you're like at the garden you want to be a little bit higher up you don't want to be lower Stuff. So there, you know, what? I saw this clip after we, we we had our episode last week where they had like this fake park atmosphere oh, going oh, on. Next to oh, the, did you see that? People, like, see it was that? people like walking, like there was yeah, a guy walking like, a dog. baby and a dog. I'm like, what there was, was that somebody about? pushing around a baby doll on a stroller. And I was like, what <laughs> well, are you, you doing? Do you know what that was for? Like, so I don't know. Apparently they were trying to honor New Jersey parks. It was just... It was strange. I don't know. Because when I think of New Jersey, I think of like the Jersey Shore. I don't think of a park. <laughs> you know, they had commercials. I think someone too. from New Jersey came up with that idea. I know, right? Wait, I, I, <laughs> and I saw like, and it was so funny. I saw commercials like 
during the, the event, which had like the worst New Jersey accents, like this terrible, like I don't even recall that either. <laughs> sought out. But I'm like, that's not enticing anyone to go there with that no. voice and that sound. <laughs> None of it was. And it was about parks and stuff, but the accent was terrible. So that's funny. Definitely yeah. Funny. That came up after we had spoken. I was like, what was going on there? It was definitely weird, you know, because you have a 30 never day, you know, and you have people <laughs> acting like they're going to spend a day out at the park when we're watching a hockey game. <laughs> so, so I want to talk about the the rempy of it all, and you know, obviously, yeah, you got to really laugh. TV, but we <laughs> so. had we had the um, we had the advantage of kind of hearing the announcers talk about him, talk about uh, his his backstory, his debut. Did you know? Did you know anything, or did your husband know anything about Rempy debuting? Did you have any expectation that that um, this incredible fight would happen, like within? within moments. I mean, with his size, you kind of would expect him to try to fight somebody. Um, <laughs> well, we're just excited though, when he did get called up, um, yeah. especially in, since he was making his debut in an outdoor game, which was the first time ever for anybody in the NHL. So I thought that was pretty cool. And it was also the anniversary of when his dad passed. So I think it was a pretty emotional day in general for him. Um, but I think, you know, automatically you've got that, you know, New York rivalry between the Islanders and the Rangers. So you're going to see a fight in some capacity. And what better way to do it than with a rookie, right? Who's got to prove himself. Well, I mean, he, 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 he keeps trying to prove himself. When he threw his arms up in the air, that really got everybody pretty riled up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely like Connor Mackey round two with that. So that, like, that was, like last week, that was good. So, yeah. So now we've got our whole hashtag, what will Rempe do? Um, yeah. Because now it's a thing. It's like, who's and, next? <laughs> and so, and then, I, you know, and I've seen comments, you know, about, I don't know, someone's calm, you know, because Edstrom's not doing that. So, you know, they're on the same line and they're both giant, you know, they're both around six, seven, although there, there's talk of Rampy being just a little bit taller. Um, we were talking about that last week. My son's six, seven. So, okay. I, I mean, I know, I, like my son used to, like the, the penalty he got against the Devils, my son went through that a lot, you know, um, just cause he's, he was giant playing. And so, so we're going to get that as long as he play, he plays and, but the fighting thing, and now we're seeing that they're kind of staged or kind of, yeah, kind of it's talking like about about it beforehand. It's like, are you ready to go? <laughs> yeah. So you know, now it's going to be a curious thing. It's going to, what's going to happen next game. Big talk too is, you know, will he fight Reeves? You know, so now, now there's like bets going. We were on. talking about that last night. <laughs> I can't wait. I did get concerned, you know, when he was headed to the penalty box because he stumbled a little bit, you know, and I was thinking, oh, no. He just had like, a bloody nose. That took, that's yeah, what took well, too long. I mean, you know, he got some blows to the head. So I was thinking this better not be a concussion. We had enough of that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I don't, I don't, worry about I don't think it'll slow him down because he still wants to prove himself. And he's clearly getting the go ahead to keep fighting. Yeah. I'm, I'm, convi I'm convinced that the NHL is incentivizing these guys in some way. Oh, oh we're talking it's, it's about so it. Good for ratings. Because, and I mean, look at it. He didn't even get suspended. So, I mean, you know, it's... Well, he couldn't. He shouldn't have. Like, the hit was yeah. fine. You know, yeah. he was it's just, just the fact that he is a giant. And that's... And, and unfortunately, we're going to have those kind of hits if he's yeah. going to stay physical like that. He needs to control himself a little bit. Yeah, They're going to antagonize the fights. Yeah, the yeah, the comments about it. When I was reading about it, everyone's like, oh, he should have been fined, suspended, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, they don't you know, know, there's charging him, and then there's being almost seven feet tall on skates. You can't really help yourself. <laughs> my, my son used to get in trouble just by standing there and then moving his arms back, and he'd hit the kid behind him in the nose. The kid would get mm -hmm. a bloody a bloody nose, and then my kid would get in trouble. And my, my son's like, I'm not even doing anything. I just yeah. put something in my pocket. You know, so that's what it's going to be like. We're going to watch it. But I will say, like, if you listen to Laviolette after, like, the game, like, I think um, – uh, and after one of the fights, when he was talking, he, he, you know, you're seeing that he's like, the fans love it. And the minute he says that, you know what it's about. And then, and then they've got the video on him, you know, talking to all these guys he's fighting before the game. I don't really like that it's staged. Let's see how long this continues. I don't expect this to be happening, um, you know, this week when they play them again. Um, yeah, probably not. I can see Reeves doing something. I, and we were talking yesterday. We're like, we Reeves probably already called him on the phone. Different. And we're like, all right. It's so safe. The They're already planning it. They're choreographing it as we speak. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, like the blue line at this time. Of game. <laughs> and aside from that, he's, he did score his first goal as well. 
And he didn't know he even scored it till the joy on his face. That was, was like the cutest face Christmas. ever. It was, was so just, funny. He's like, oh, no, what's happening? Yay. <laughs> it's like, and yeah, then, that was mine. And then he did, well, he didn't even know until he wasn't confirmed until afterwards when he was doing the yeah. interview that it was his. Liz, <laughs> this is cool. Liz texts me. She goes, I love how how that goal, no way, shape, or form determined how good of a player he is. <laughs> nope. No, and it, you know what's funny? I said it was a very brighter goal of him. <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Yeah. You know, it's still it's it's interesting because you know, obviously he brings a lot to the table in terms of um strength, in terms of of um you know, just just a big, big stature. But can he skate? Yeah. Can he shoot? Right now, he's been putting himself in the right place at the right time. That paid he's off been for doing him. A lot of screening in front of the goalie, which I think helps. Exactly. That, and that's what, that that's, that's what Christine, about. Christine was saying yesterday. She's yeah. like, I don't understand why we're not just parking this giant person in front of their goalie. In front of my, uh, someone's called the finisher. That's what he did. <laughs> you know, he just, you can't see around a wall. You know, just put him right there. You know, and he's a little dorky in a way too. So he just kind of keeps that move because it works. Yesterday, it works. You, you saw, you saw like the Blue Jackets goalie. He couldn't see a lot. I mean, oh my, yeah. we, we just missed those opportunities, you know, to capitalize on that. That game took some years off my life yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to imagine these guys are tired though. We, oh, we they were definitely of- cast from a three o'clock game Saturday, then having to travel and then having to play again at six o'clock. It's like, no way. And it, we, it, we saw a couple of uh, just like tongue in cheek tweets where people are like, well, if the Rangers can't win 11 games in a row, then I don't even know what we're doing here. We're not contenders. But I think I think they can 100 percent. Since the beginning of the season, like despite the amount of injuries and everything, they've been piecing it together and still pulling it out. And I genuinely feel if there's ever a year, this is the one because you would have not have thought they'd be contending at this point of the season with everything that's been happening. Why would you not have thought that? Because they- I felt like the loss of people top. pretty early, definitely, yeah. We went at the top the whole time. time. We never really fell too far. And if we did, then it was more because we were all in the same point zone. So even though it looked like we fell far, we, you know, we were never really yeah. out of it. So this year when it started, we've always been, you know, in the top, you know, few- so what was your expectation in the beginning of a season where you, you know, you're, you're kind of saying that it's, that's a curious comment. I mean, I have, I have more faith in the, I'm like you know, a cautiously <laughs> optimistic fan. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I'm there. Like, like I'm the long-term <laughs> investor you know, in, in, yeah. in, the, in the crowd. And, you know, I was like, I've been let down. You know? <laughs> and, yeah. And, I mean, you know, that's really the consensus with a lot of the fans. But it's I was like, we have a lot of injuries of like some really key players, you know, let's the see early injuries. Yeah. They but called people that. up and they added new field. people to the mix early that made it work. And that was yeah. really like refreshing because it was also younger players that hadn't really been up, you know, and they were able to play along, you know, with Kreider, Mika, et cetera, and just like function. And that was really nice. And I do think quick getting added for this year was definitely a uh, yeah necessity. That's, that's we haven't really had tandem it. between the two of them has been like because I've watched quick for twenty years here, you know, play and uh, and you know, and we've kind of I've interviewed kind of players, uh, Kings players and fans, and um, you know, he's kind of got that you know that that Lundquist mentality that across the you know uh, um, you know the league where he's just respected everywhere and. You know, and he was always a favorite. So, well, he's just a good guy all around. I, we got lucky there too. That was, I think, that was just a lucky pickup. And the fact, and he's very motivated because he's coming really. You know, he's really can have this opportunity to, um, you know, to hit this milestone if he plays enough. And he wants you know. to do it as a Ranger too, because it was his hometown team. Exactly. You know, everything else. I think it would be a nice end to his career next year for him so, to get out there. Yeah, so if we keep that, and so going into that, into yesterday's game too, which is, again, we keep talking more about like, hey, when we're looking at things, we have this bird's eye view from the TV where you're like, right. oh, it's wide open, it's wide open. Um, and when they lose or when they play this game like they played yesterday, they just seem to be like one foot off, you know, like one, one foot to the left, you know, the rebound's going that way. They're one foot too slow, you know. Um, I just felt they like they were out skated yesterday too, like, you know, before I knew it, I was like, oh, they're going down the ice again. Like it was, you know, they just couldn't keep up. And there was a goal that I attributed solely to Miller just 
stopping skating right yeah. in front of me. And I, I was like, what happened there? Oh, and like, yeah. you know, that wasn't the game difference, but it's still like, that was awful. Yeah. I it watched happens. him four times. I think he's a liability, but that's, that's an unpopular, unpopular our theory, opinion. Our theory is that the more she, the more she says she doesn't like him, the better he does. You, so. You know what I, so we should say that we don't like him. And then tomorrow he's going to pull out a hat. I'm going to listen to this podcast and then he goes home and he cries and then he does better the next time. So he, he actually had a, he improved. He quietly, he quietly apologizes to Liz over and over again. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, that was not, I completely agree with you. You know, what's interesting. I think on the whole, there's so many good factors for this team that would indicate to me that they are going to be real contenders. And the biggest one is that they have so much talent in and so much depth of their lineup. They have great goaltending, decent defense, big guys, but not everyone is always firing on the same cylinder at the same time. And I really felt that in this Columbus game, you know, Mika and Kreider, like where have they, where have they been? As Mika, he's been, he is never where, the rebound is coming. He's never in the right place. It's like he, he, you said, you said it, Christine, like, like a step off, like something with a little bit off with them. Um, I, a, I feel like, issue. and when they're together, it's great. But yeah. When and, not, when, yes. like, and, and at this happening? point, but here's the great thing. The Rangers ha are in first place without everybody working at the same time or mm -hmm. without, you know, all of a sudden the goaltender will not work or, you know, defense will suck or whatever. Yeah, and exactly. they still found ways to win. So wait until they get their crap together. And they're just going to be blowing everybody away for the rest totally. of the season. And, and hopefully it'll it, come right in time for the playoffs. It'll be quiet manipulation to make people think that they're not that good. Just waiting, Ooh. just save your energy. Hey, the thing, just the thing is, like, out of the water in two months. <laughs> the, the and that's where they need the consistency. You know, it, it's interesting because every time they're doing well in after game ten, like you know, after game ten when they won, and and Liz was chatting, she's like, "I can feel it. It's gonna get to ten on game eight. You I said right. it too. Called it. It was like they're making it. And, and um, <clears throat> and then they're you know the pressure builds, but they were you know they're talking about how like how they're they were playing safer, you know, in the third period when they had the lead and, you know, they were doing well. And then, then they stopped doing that. So um, they know, and here's the thing too, I know, I know people get all over them, but when you, in, when they're interviewed afterward or when they're quoted afterwards, they, they, they know, they know. And mm -hmm. what we don't really see the same thing twice and where their odds go down or where they're, you know, the, the faith isn't there with people is the consistency. So we, we are going to lose some games. And as I, you know, I don't know, again, I, I look at the boards more than, than, than my partner here, but you know, just because a team's in last place doesn't mean they're not good. You know, they have their games and they can play well in, in doing so. And I mean, I think the Oilers are a good example of that this season. Yeah. Like they fired their coach and then go on a 16 game well, win streak. It's like, because they got our guy, you know, well, we, we got gold here. <laughs> so, but that, um, yeah, and it's like well, you, you know, shouldn't count any team out because you just don't know. Yeah, yeah and, and I think we can count the Papa. And every game from now on, we're gonna have these different challenges. You know, just yeah. like last time, like last weekend, they were saying we want the game. They like the Islanders needed the game, mm -hmm. and we we needed well, we needed it for our own personal reasons. And Columbus is so far down, they just want to screw us up, you know. Mm -hmm. And they they did it, and like you know, they're they getting lost against them last time too. Yeah. It's like, you know, let's just, I mean, it's the same reason I watch Boston games. I want them to lose and cry. You know, it's like the it's Boston just, games infuriate me. I'm like when I see them losing, that's when I turn it on because they're dirty and they, they mess up. They get, start getting penalties at the end of the game. And, and uh, it kills me that Boston has so many points because they always lose in overtime. Well, like, no, they actually have, a, they have actually have a lot of overtime wins. I was talking, well, I actually was talking about this with you yesterday, but I was talking with my son about it. Because with the PWHL games, mm -hmm. um, a lot of those games are going into overtime, and because they have a different point system. So we we're talking okay. about how I think you were saying about a third of those games are going to overtime. But I'm also noticing, um, I think Boston has like 12 overtime wins, and the same with like the the Sharks. And I know we gave them well. One. The Sharks is a whole nother. <laughs> well, but the, but the thing is, the amount of overtimes that they're getting to, and then they're winning in overtime. Mm -hmm. you know? And of course, when they played the Canucks, I wanted one of them to lose, and they have to go in overtime so they both get points. That happens every single time. Mm -hmm. So I need to rethink my mojo on that one. <laughs> next one. I'm like, I'm gonna mess that up because that happens every. I'm like, they're up four points. 
how did they lose in overtime? <laughs> you know, so, so that always happens. I mean, <laughs> like I was half expecting us to lose the stadium series game. And then, you know, there we were six to five. I know. I think, I think that's a fair, I think when they're down three goals, that's a, that's a fair, that's a like, fair you know, guess. That I was like, we had a good time. You know, we enjoyed it. Can't wait for the next one. And then a lot of our friends left because they wanted to beat the traffic. Oh no. Cause they were like, they oh, were- we're going to lose. I mean, there was like what, five minutes left. Like, yeah, there were videos that? from outside where they you hear the ranger chant from outside. Yeah. They're like, "What's happening?" You oh, know, and so I've oh. seen it. I saw a couple of those. <laughs> they were like, "No!" Think about how loud it was if you could hear that halfway through the parking lot inside. Isn't that amazing! Like that just gives you chills. So when you went, let, let's quickly go back to like you said, you went. You know, in 2015, you went to your first ranger game at Madison Square Garden. It's, um, you know, and I talked to people who haven't been there. You know, in different arena, I think we're the only team really, and we keep talking about this, that you can actually hear the Ranger chant on any game on the TV and any stadium. There's that many people. But when you're there and you're actually watching your team too, he said, there's loyal Rangers fans everywhere you go, no matter where they are on the road, there's always that like huge group. And it's just kind of amazing because you don't see that for anywhere else. So, what was your favorite moment? Back in that first game that you so, went to. I was such a hockey noob at that point. You know, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I was just like, you know what? I'm a passive fan. We're making a beer. Yay. <laughs> Woo. My husband and I were just excited. We had actually been in a car accident the day before, but we still went to the game, which was like, you know, it was the Black Friday game right after Thanksgiving, which was why we went because we both had off from work. And it was just, it was such a weird atmosphere for me to be in because I'd only ever been to baseball games. You know, so it was like a completely different environment. Literally everybody was hanging on every single play the whole game. Like I had to stand up to watch (laughs) because the people in front of me were standing. And I couldn't tell you what the score was, you know, because I was just so engrossed in like what was happening. And I was trying to figure out what was going on. But it was just exciting to be there. And I think that was really what kind of made me want to keep watching, you know, even though I didn't know anything really at that point apart from them getting a point, you know, when I went to the I think that's such a great thing because, you know, <clears throat> I, I've taken a lot of friends to their first hockey game. And once they're there, they're like, this is amazing. Like, and as far as sports go, I have to say it's faster than just about any other sport. There's yes. way more action. Every goal is so important. And there's enough of them that happen during the game that it keeps you interested. I, I think it, I think it's awesome. Even it's just the attempts, like, you know, you're hanging on every, you know, pass and is it going to hit off the post? Is it going to get taken out of play by going above the glass? Like you just don't know. Yeah. And I think, I think the NHL is capitalizing on it. I mean, look how many people not only went to the stadium series, but watched it on TV, they broke Mm -hmm. tons of records with. I think there was um, almost 80,000 at the game in person, which was just like unreal to me. Yeah. 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 And and so many people tuning in um, to watch games I, I think you know they're realizing that hockey is a big is a big draw, um, and I think it's only going to get more exciting from here. Mm-hmm. I think there, there's talk about more expansion teams coming in the next couple of years, and what I'm cities they're going to be in. Was, you know, they're going to have another big city greens game too. A, a big city greens game, yes. I don't know if you watched that. Was uh, this mm-hmm. was the animated uh, cartoon that they <laughs> they did? Um, it was live during the game. They during actually the had an Grandma. animated version. With oh, geez, where all no. the Rangers and all the they're playing the Capitals, everyone was um, like a different character. I think mm-hmm. like the refs were chicken. Like yeah, oh, the chicken. <laughs> the the chicken was a grandma. You know, oh, like <laughs> it's crazy. We actually were at a bar. It was Castleton Corners in Staten Island. We were there because we got, we're in town at the time. Mm-hmm. So it was around St. Patrick's Day, and they did that game. And we actually got the bar to put, put up with the game. So there's a cartoon and the game going on. And it, it took them a while to realize what, what, what was what happening. Was I would have loved to see, to have seen that Rempy fight in cartoon form. I don't know how they would even do it. This is for children. That would have been pretty funny. It would have been banned from really the cartoon from now on. <laughs> so, so, so Liz, pr- uh, predictions for the season? Um what do you what do you foresee happening? Well, I mean, I'm definitely going to be going to the parade with my kids, hands down. You, know what's you just you manifest it, and it's yep. so I manifested the ten game win streak, and I'm so. going to be there too. I'm going to get yep. my ticket. Everybody's going to be there, and it's just like you know, 
our daughter said, let's go Rangers for the first time in the game last night. And it was so exciting because she was embarrassed to be saying it. And she didn't want to go to bed because she said, mommy, hockey's still on. Oh, Aww. And it was so raising, raising the next generation. I love it. Hey, the bedtime, and right? and two and a half. So you got to start them young. Yeah, you do. <laughs> um, favorite, any favorite players um, just from, from over the years or currently? Well, I had a soft spot for Heedle. And unfortunately, I, uh, you know, had to mourn that a little bit. Fortunately, the soft season. spot was in his head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, you know, Mika and Kreider are definitely my other two favorites. But my husband's new favorite player is Rumpy. Oh, my yeah. I, he was he like, I'm waiting to buy my rugby jersey. <laughs> like, I got to fight for the big the big kids. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I have one. Said, you know, to have that much passion, you know, just from a weekend is uh, definitely something. And I agree. So I'm and curious least, to see what he does next. <laughs> any least favorite players? Well, talk about this. we already I talked do. about Miller. <laughs> We've been there before. But, you know, everybody has something different. So it's hard to say anyone's, you know, my least favorite. Um, I wish Goodrow would bring more to the table, personally. But you know, he and pieces it on a different line. To. And I know. So this is what we're gonna. We started. They started talking about this last game, and I'm. I'm kind of curious to see what they might do because, you know, Valakit was talking about like changing lines up. I think he. I think they started kind of doing that. So they were um, doing that yesterday a lot. Yeah. I saw yeah. a, lot, a lot of piecemealing. Well, and that's kind of the first time in a while, like to kind of really, you know kind of start mixing it up and I wonder I, I wonder what was in his head to kind of reach that point you know um for stuff as opposed to like that like let them figure it out on their own right. kind of a thing I think it was uh, a good game for them to to make that experiment because they, they were already down they he knew those guys were tired it's Let's not it yeah and it's not it's not like you know they're not playing somebody that they're that they are going to face you know in, in any kind of significant way in the playoffs most likely right so I, I well, think that's never actually, know anything could change. Yeah, I mean, you never know, but I, I think mathematically it's going to be oh, at this point, probably challenging. Not. Maybe um, a month ago, but yeah, and, and maybe it'll happen in the future. But I, I think that that was probably a good game to say, hey, look, let's this is a time we have the opportunity on the ice. Let's see if anything, let's see what chemistry there is, let's see what, right. what comes of it. Like, I like that they've been moving Laffy around a little bit because yeah. I think, um, you know, he's really. He came out of his shell this season, and we needed him to. I was really holding out for the hat trick the other night for him. Like, and that they kept putting him back in. Thing. They just kept trying to give it to him and give it to him, and he kept trying. Well, that's when they were also piecing the lines together with him. And I was yeah. like, oh, that could work. Just trying to give it to him. And then, you know, we, okay, we let's acknowledge a couple of good things that happened this week, too. You know, um, so for, really quick, kind of going back to this game yesterday, you know, we did have Tom Layla on a couple weeks ago and he talked about like an experience where he had, where it was a high pressure game, not for him, but for his teammate, Mr. Gretzky, but he got caught in it and he's like, and I panicked. So, you know, I, now I kind of see things a little bit differently. You know, mm -hmm. we've talked about kind of being exhausted or whatever, but you know, I don't know, like the pressure of like, you know, having to hit these milestones and they, they continue to hit several milestones. It's almost like every game, I'm not focused on what's coming up, but they're like, oh, you know, this is happening, this is happening. So we, we did see Artemi Panarin, you know, have an all-time, you know, uh, you know, points, you know, he's reached that. He's, he's 33rd like, goal, and that was his career great. high, which is amazing. So he's doing really well. Um, you know, last week when, um, you know, we could go when Mika scored in overtime, like we broke a franchise re record with, you know, overtime goals. Um and so there are things that are continuing in there's been some this good moments, no matter it, what. It just continues. So, you know, mm -hmm. even though we might see a game that's not as play as well, we're still kind of reaching those, you know, those milestones. So it's there's still a positive game. in each one, no matter what. Yeah, we're we're gonna keep doing that. And we're, mm -hmm. you know, and we're all again, we've we've kind of talked about this too. We we're we're all kind of taking shots and we're all getting points. So when we have those really great games where we're scoring goals, it's not just one person. It's everybody, you know, Igor almost scored a goal. Yeah. You know, he did get in, he got in the season. It's going to happen this season. That's on he, my, he almost that's on scored. My if, if the guy didn't grab it down, he would have gotten it. He mm -hmm. did get an assist. So we have seen those things in the And he's game. back hundred <laughs> percent. Like, he was, um, they announced today, he was the third star of the week for the NHL. So I'm glad that yeah. they saw what he did in the past week. I know I wasn't worried. This well, last year it was December where he wasn't really playing. In a so little well. slump, yeah. And and then all of a sudden, you know, he 
he ended up having his best season ever. So mm-hmm. I, you know, he turned it back on. It's, it is what it is. You know, he's his yeah. hardest critic. So I don't worry about him at all. Oh, yeah. Um, and then when he's on, he's on. I think mm-hmm. the challenge for fans now, because one of the things I heard is when Quick was playing well and Igor wasn't, they're like, well, where's his chance? I'm like, well, he doesn't have one. It's not as exciting, <laughs> but <honestly>. he needs <laughs> one. They need to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you know, chanting Quickie, it's like there's only so no. much you can do with that. You can't do it like multiple times in succession. It's maybe once or twice. Well, you know, we learned that uh, Columbus Blue Jackets chant was C, B, J, or whatever it was. I can't that stand was like, uh, it's no. <laughs> I jump in my skin every single time. <laughs> like, we I know it's coming, that- but it still startles me. <laughs> we also learned that they have a, uh, no, it was Philly, right? It was Philly. Philly has a uh, their own horn for fights. So... Mm-hmm. Uh, so I actually learned that too. I like, think it's a Philly to, uh, to do that. That seems like a very <laughs> Philly, Philly experience. Yeah. <laughs> all the things we've learned, the growls, the horns, the, 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 all kinds of things. So we continuously are learning, you know, crazy stuff, but we have some fun questions. I'm going right. to make some stuff I love up questions. for <laughs> all of us actually. Yeah. And I think we can kind of build on this. So it's kind of like that, you know, who would, it's kind of like the, the hockey G-rated version of like, who would you marry? Who would you, you know, would date be. or whatever. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, um, there's a couple of like, but like, let's see, like who out of, out of every on the team, except for the obvious, we know Trocek is like, you know, the cook, but who would you like, who would you want to have dinner with? Who do you think would be the better cook that would kind of have dinner and like be fun to have dinner with? Hmm. This goes to both Liz's. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I think it's not Kreider because I've heard he's just like chicken and sweet potatoes or whatever. Like he's optimal health all the time. So that sounds super boring. Um, you know, I, I I still want to have Miller over for dinner because I have words to have with him. That's my, <laughs> so for a conversation life. wise, so who do you think, so there's conversation wise, but who do you think would make like, would be like would present a nice dinner. Like who'd be like, you know, the really good cook. Well, I mean, Trocek. Miller, Miller would, would deck it out. I think. You took Trocek out of the mix. Um, oh, Trocek definitely. You know, I, I think he's just too obvious, obvious, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, I have to say I've been to Sweden before and the food is quite good. So maybe, maybe Mika, maybe he could uh, whip up some meatballs, Swedish meatballs, not, not the Italian kind. He's not even <laughs> in Trocek's territory. <laughs> I'm going to say probably Adam Fox, just because of the Long Island commonality here. He makes it what a sandwich? Oh, <laughs> like yeah. American style food. You know, I don't know. How like, about you, Christine? I like it food food. personally. So <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. I don't really branch out too much with my food choices. So for me, I don't I, they're all so young, they probably don't know how to cook. And the reason Trocek knows like he's probably got that good Italian mom um mm-hmm. going on there. Um I think Panarin would be he would make something silly, like you know like snacks for dinner uh, and, and, and it would be a silly kind of conversation so i think panera would be like like, like that would be the person i want to have dinner with and make dinner with I think as long as he would fun. make some fresh bread that so next question Jesse's joke about that in the post interview completely exactly. he was like panera and always fresh <laughs> It needs to be on a shirt. He needs to make that a hobby. Like that should be his thing. You know, I don't know. Why isn't he not marketed this yet? You know? So, um, yeah. So only because I was watching um, a commercial for Naked and Afraid. Who? Mm -hmm. We don't have to be naked. Could be. Um, But if we were stranded out for a couple of weeks with somebody, you know, in the woods or whatever, who would be the one that would help you survive? That's where I think Kreider. I mean, I would go with Kreider. I, I, Kreider was my first thought. I feel like he's <laughs> somebody who'd be like, hold on, like I have the Swiss Army knife and I carry this with me and, and we can eat. Did you know you can eat the bark of a tree? Or like he'd be like very Boy Scout survival instinct. Totally. He'd be like Bear Grylls out there. He'd like, you know, you can drink your own urine. I'd be like, no, I don't want to do that. But that seems like very Kreider to me. Yeah, I feel like would like. probably help in terms of like food survival because he could just take down like a bear. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting the, the giants, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, little roar, our own little bears, you know. 
<laughs> I have to get used to the new kids on the, on the block too. Cause that's yeah. not the first thought in my head, you know? No, you think of like our tried and trues from the past few years. I could have used these guys before when my son was playing hockey and I was like always considering, you know, like, you know, trying to, to write Chara to see if I can get his old stuff because like my kid didn't fit in anything. <laughs> I'm like, how do I get giant shoes for my kid? I'm not looking forward to that with my son. He is only two and a half and he's already three feet tall. Yeah. That double the height at two, right on the money. My yeah. son is six, seven, I have six, uh, my other son's six, four, but mm -hmm. Matthew, who is our consultant, he comes mm -hmm. on, uh, he, he is a size 17 shoe. I mean, oh. he's got, he's got big feet. And my so, son and my daughter are the same size and they're 14 months apart. So I'm, uh, I have my work cut out. I like the big boys there. Oh yeah. So who would, be, and who, out of all the players, who would be the most fun, like on a most fun, like a fantasy date, you know, um, you know, to kind of like, that would be the most entertaining on a date. You think? Miller. <laughs> I can't help it. I, I, I tease because I love. So I honestly think kind of probably Mika, because once I heard, you know, he did Lollapalooza and everything last year, I think that would be kind of fun to like do something out of the box. Your date would be a weekend long, you know, hey, you know what you roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, I know, think. I, a great I, date know who, I know who's top of Christine's list. Um, for date? Uh, Kako's father. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go because Kako's the same, yeah. same age as my child. <laughs> Kako's my favorite. He's. I would like to just have him talk to me the whole weekend. That would be the greatest date ever because I think he's got the cutest of voice, you know. Um, and and that would be, uh, yeah, that would that would be a dream date for me. But yeah, if his dad's single and looks like him, I, yeah, he's, you know, the older brothers or cousins, I don't know. That would be kind of right. I love it. Well, on, on that note, ladies, um, I want to say thank you so much to Liz for joining us. Um, we have so much Rangers gossip to gossip about. Oh, yes. um, so it could go on for Yeah, here's your question. What will Rempe do? We have a week. One way to find out. Weeks. So wait, right off the top of your head, do you think you think there's gonna be a challenge on uh, Thursday or no? I don't know. Isn't the game wait? The same Monday? Monday? They're playing Wednesday. Wednesday? Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, it's Today, we're recording this on Monday night. Yeah, Wednesday's the next game. I'm going to okay, say Wednesday. no. I don't even know the day is half the time. I, know. I think he's going to save energy for Reeves. I think, I think he'll, 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 he'll take the night off from fighting Wednesday, and then they'll play. He'll fight again in the wild game. Yeah, that I, I can see that too. So I, I anticipate we'll, we'll, we'll take the win easily. We'll be playing like we should have played yesterday. <laughs> and yes. then we'll, we'll see all I'm those hoping. things. Got to have and a win. We'll start our streak again. And we, you know, we are battling that first place again. We got the Canucks right there along with Boston. We're just kind of riding the points back and forth on those. We really, you know, we're, we're all neck and neck at this point. Yeah. And we're going to start working. talking about our superstitions again because we don't think we really want to end up on first. Like, so, but we want to keep on going and start to kind of hopefully see that build where we're going to show people that we are the contender because right now we've got the holes and that's what people are feeding into. So, you know, I like to see more consistency with stuff. So that'll be exciting going in there. So, yay. Thank you so much for joining. I love the experience. Thank you for too. Me. Yay. Thanks, we'll guys. have you on again soon. Yes, it was great. <laughs>